All right, so now let's talk about some rendering options, how to render our scenes efficiently. So here we have just a few simple polygons with some basic preset surfaces, uh, just selected from Shade Explorer. And uh, let's take a look. And we have, uh, we have a floor, so we can have some shadows. So now let's take a look at our render options. So if we go to the rendering and render uh, rendering settings, we have this window here uh, with a number of options. Right, so we have our default render created with our default global light. We have checked this active viewport, which uh, if you select, for example, front view and click render, it will render it from the front view, right? Because this is the active viewport. You select the top, it will render from top. Right? So this is what this active viewport means. Right? So if we want to render the, the meta camera one, we just select this one. Uh, here on the right side, uh, by default, you have the render history. So you can sort of compare the renders or you can check uh, the ones that you've created before, if you're creating some sort of changes, how it affects. You have a number of polygons here, vertices, number of lights, right, different statistics. Uh, you can select to render active objects only. Right? So now if we have selected this cube, it will only render the cube. And you can also select area rendering. Right? So then obviously you can set uh, whichever part of the image you want to have rendered. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory, I think. Now, if we go here, we have a number of options. So first we have these tabs, right? Basics, image, GI, effects, multipass, and miscellaneous. Uh, we have a different rendering uh, styles, which you can we can uh, tweak those settings and save it as your own style. You have different methods like ray tracing, path tracing, uh, which is usually the best. Uh, you can also have tune renderer or just render wireframe. Uh, it depends on uh, what you need. For preview, uh, ray tracing is just fine. Now here in the basics, uh, you can subdivide during the render time. You can set anti-aliasing, but of course the higher the longer the render. You can uh, choose to render background image, should you have it or not. Uh, you can use the illuminance correction, which will sort of um, boost the illuminance of the entire scene if it happens that, um, for instance, you can't get enough light in your scene in spite of your efforts, this is sort of like a brute force way to make it brighter. Uh, and you can choose a shadow type. Right? You can choose a shadow map, which is uh, typically faster, or you can use a ray tracing. Uh, in the image, well, then basically you choose your render size. So you have a lot of different presets here. Right, so you have, well, let's see. We can choose this one and you can see that it modifies the view from the camera. Right, if you have selected this rendering area, right, in the camera options, it shows you which part of the image is going to be rendered and which one will be left uh, sort of outside of the render area. Uh, then you can also do it manually. You can set your width, you can set your height, aspect ratio and resolution. And here you can also set the scale of it. So if you want to see it more clearly, you can set it to you know, 100%. Uh, you can also uh, control your scale from down here. And here you have also the dimensions. 
just like here. So you can also control them from there. You can also lock them by clicking this little button. I mean, uh, it's not going to lock them, it's going to... Um, if you will modify one, the other will be modified just the same, right, proportionally. So then, of course, it would change into a custom settings. Okay, um, so in our global illumination tab, well, first of all, you have to activate it if you want. Right, right now, we don't have it, so it looks the way it looks. If we choose uh, one, usually you want to stick to path tracings. Those bottom ones are pretty old. They're not really used that often anymore. Uh, usually you want to go with path tracing. And uh, again, you have a number of options here to tweak. Uh, just depends again on what you have in your scene and how precise you want to go. If we just leave it on default, you can see right away it helps our scene. Of course, it adds to the render time. It has to go a number of times through it, but you can see the result, right? Immediately it sort of helps to eliminate those very dark shadows. There is much more bounce light in the scene. Uh, even though our method here is set to ray tracing, which is Kind of good for preview, but not exactly for the final one. For the final one, you want to have path tracing uh, in both uh, as a method and as a GI. Now, like I said, this is going to be the longest sort of render time, but also the quality will be the highest. And you can see it kind of keeps going and going. It, mm, it also depends, of course, on other parameters like sampling. Uh, of course, the more materials, the more lights, the more resolution, all of this, uh, all of this affects your render. Right? But you can see the difference, right? You can see the difference here on this grain and on this light. And if we have both set to pass tracing, you can clearly tell, even with default settings. All right, so this is what you uh, what you need to remember about. And you can you can like I said, you can increase those settings. You can also go to this miscellaneous tab and increase the ray tracing quality from this default fifty. But if you uh, you know if you don't need to, then don't uh, in Effects tab, well, you can tweak the camera into fisheye or you can create a motion blur if you do animations. And here in a multi-pass, uh, you basically cho choose a different passes if you want to render like that. Uh, I typically stick to just surface ID, which is useful for creating selections because basically it assigns different color for each material used in the scene because uh, Things like alpha is just assigned automatically by shade. Alpha, Z depth, uh, these are created automatically by shade. You don't need to select them additionally. So essentially, if we will render it now, just let me show you. So let's render it. We have selected this surface ID, remember? And we will get alpha and Z depth for free, so to speak. So let's just wait a second because we have our path tracing. Okay, we're done. So now uh, let's see, we need anything else? No, we can save it. So let's go to save and save image. Let's save it as a single or you can save it as a single or as a split into different passes. But let's save it as a single scene. And we don't need EXR. Let's choose Photoshop out of all these. All of these support layers. But the Photoshop is the most common, right? So if we want to save it, 
you see what happens, right? It offers us additionally a color depth, channels, right, which we want to have by default. We want to have alpha and we want to have Z depth. So now we just click OK. All right, and now so let's go to Photoshop quickly and have a look how it turned out. And here we have our file. Right, so we have the render, um, sort of a beauty pass. We have our Z depth. Uh, Z depth typically comes um, done pretty well, but you can always open, um, for example, levels and tweak it uh, a little bit to emphasize it. Okay, and we have our surface ID here. Uh, so we can easily select objects that have different materials and then just work with them more efficiently. All right, so that's pretty much the way it looks.